Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm so happy you could join me today. Thank you so much. I hope everybody's doing well. It's been a while since I've published a video. I apologize for that. I had some family situations that I had to take care of, but I'm here today with a brand new tutorial for you that I think you're really going to enjoy. I'm going to be making that beautiful butterfly necklace that you saw in the introduction, and it's actually a multi-purpose necklace. Now I've been playing around with the idea of a multiple purpose necklace for quite a while now. It's been at least a couple of years, I think. It took me a while to come up with a solution that made sense. And you know how I feel about necklaces that serve multiple purposes. I love them. I love to have a multi-strand necklace, for example, that you can separate so you can wear one or the other or both. Now the necklace that I'm going to show you how to make today isn't like that. It's not made up of two parts. It's one piece, so it's a little bit different. But what I like about it is that it gives you many options so you can wear it different lengths for different looks. I'll show you what I'm talking about at the end of this video when I go to model the necklace. So if you want to see that, you're going to have to stick around to the end. But anyway, guys, I'm going to be using the beads from Dee Dee's Deluxe Bead Box for the month of May. And if you're not familiar with that box, I'll leave a link down below so you can go check it out. But the design that I'm going to be showing you today works with just about any pendant, any kind of bead. So if you don't have the beads, don't be afraid to go into your stash and look for other items that are similar. In any case, I'm going to leave a detailed list of all the materials down below in the description section of this video. I'm also going to leave some timestamps if you want to skip forward to any portion of the video. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please think about doing so because it really does help my channel and it helps me as a content creator to stay motivated to create more videos for you. And if you do subscribe, don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can be notified every time I release a video. And I don't always ask for this, but if you give me a thumbs up or leave a comment down below, it really helps my channel as well. So anyway guys, I'm very anxious to show you how to make this necklace. So let's go ahead, turn the camera around and we'll get started. And here's Dee Dee's Deluxe Bead Box for the month of May. The name of this box is Seasonal Bliss. Let's go ahead and pick the beads. So here are all the lovely contents. As you can see, they're very spring-like. I love the butterfly pendant and the flower beads. And these Alashan Rainbow Agate beads are absolutely gorgeous. Now I have prepared this pendant already. As you can see, I've attached some jump rings. I have two 7mm jump rings right here at the top, as you can see. And then at the bottom, I have attached some 6mm jump rings. Let me bring it up close so you can see. I did this ahead of time to save time. Now these three are 6mm jump rings, but these two here are 5mm jump rings. So I have a 5mm here, another one there, and then I have a 6mm attached to both of them, as you can see. And the reason I attach these jump rings like this is because I wanted to hang something from the center of the pendant. So anyway, this is definitely going to be the focal piece of the necklace. We're going to use these beautiful translucent 6mm beads. They're in a gorgeous royal blue color, as you can see, and they're smooth rounds, and we're going to be using all of them. I have about 28 here. It is possible that I may have dropped a couple of them. The description says that you should have received approximately 30 pieces. I have 28 here, and we're going to be using all 28. And of course, we're going to be using these gorgeous agate beads. Look at these gorgeous rainbow colors. These are so pretty, I couldn't resist. And we're actually going to be using 32 of them. We're going to be using these flower beads. We're going to be using about 12 of these. And we are going to use two of these components for the necklace. As you can see, they're in a flower shape and these measure 15 millimeters across. I will be using this toggle clasp along with some other items to show you how to convert this necklace into a multi-strand necklace. And that's it from this collection. Now this necklace is going to have two pendants. It's going to have the larger pendant at the bottom and then it's going to have this one at the opposite end. So before we work on the strands, we're going to prepare both of these pendants. You're going to need the flower beads and you're going to need two flower beads, one for this one, and we're going to need another one for this component. Now the thing about these beads is that they are drilled, but the hole needs to line up with the holes of this component. And we're going to do that first before we go any further because not all of these beads have holes that line up but I know that you can find at least one that will. So let's go ahead and get the wire. I'm going to be using 22 gauge wire for this project today, but you can use any gauge. I like 22 gauge because it's relatively strong. It allows me to do wrap loops and I like the thickness of it. I don't like wire that's really thick and I try to avoid it if I can because I like my pieces to look more on the delicate side. I don't like them to look chunky. And when you use very heavy gauge wire, sometimes the piece can look a little chunky. I don't know if that makes any sense to you, but you can use whatever wire you want to use for your project. For wrap loops, you're going to need a thinner gauge and you can use 20, 22 or 24 gauge. I'm going to be using 22 gauge today. And as you can see, it's in a silver color. 
So let me go ahead and cut myself a piece. I'm going to cut myself a two and a half inch piece. It's a good idea to straighten your wire before you start. So there's my two and a half inch piece. So let's go ahead and begin. So we're going to start by forming a wrap loop at one end. I'm going to grab my wire, I would say a little bit more than a third of the way down, kink it, switch to this part of the wire like this, wrap the tail around the top nose of my pliers like this, and now I'm going to flip my pliers around and continue to wrap to the back like this. Remove my pliers. So this is what you should have. And I'm going to form a wrap loop. I like to grab the loop with these pliers. These are actually crimping pliers, but I like to use the tip because they grab really well and it's a very skinny tip. And now with another set of pliers, I'm going to grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. Just like that. And now I'm going to snip off the excess. And now you want to tuck the little end in. You don't want anything sharp sticking out. So this is what you should have. And now let's go ahead and find a flower that has the holes where they line up with the component. As you can see, the component has a hole at the top of this petal here and then it has another one in between these two. So that's what I'm looking for. And of course I want a pretty color. And this one looks like it might line up. So let's test it out. And I am having a little trouble getting it to go through, so it's not perfectly lined up. So let me see if I can find a different one. Let's try this one out. You want to make sure that the holes line up. And this one looks like it's lining up pretty well. And the color is pretty, so I think I'm going to go with this one. So you want to make sure that you slide your eye pin all the way up. And I'm going to grab the wire at the very top of the component, like this, kink it, switch to this portion of the wire, and I'm going to make a very big loop because I'm going to be attaching the strands to it. So I'm going to go to the widest part of my pliers, wrap the tail around, like this, flip the pliers around, and continue to wrap to the back. And I'm not going to close it just yet, guys. I'm going to keep it open. And actually, I want my loops to face the same direction. So let me go ahead and turn them like this. So this is what you want. And we'll connect the strands to this loop once the strands are formed. Let me go ahead and move these out of the way. Now at the bottom of this pendant, we're going to be attaching an 8mm agate bead. I'm going to use a ball head pin for that. Just like that. Now with your round nose pliers, you're going to grab the pin like this. Kink it. And now switch to this portion of your wire. Wrap the tail around like this, flip the pliers around and continue to wrap to the back like this, remove the pliers and now we're going to slide this open loop into the closed loop of the component just like that. And now I'm going to grab the loop with my skinny pliers and with another set of pliers, I'm going to grab the tail and I'm going to do a couple of wraps. You can do as many wraps as you want. 
it's up to you. And now I'm going to snip off the excess. And it's important that you tuck in any little bit that's sticking out. So this is what you should have. I'm going to put it down for the time being. I think it's adorable. Now for this pendant we're going to do something similar. So here's the second flower frame and I'm going to hang it right below this butterfly on this jump ring. And once again I need to find a flower that has holes that line up. And this one looks like it might work. Let me go ahead and cut off a two and a half inch piece of wire. We're going to go ahead and form a loop at this end, just like we did before. So you want to grab it a little bit more than a third of the way down, kink your wire like this, switch to this portion of the wire, grab the tail, wrap it around the nose of your pliers, flip the pliers around, and continue to wrap that tail to the back. Remove the pliers. Grab the loop with your skinny pliers. And now do a couple of wraps. Cut off the excess and now we're going to tuck in whatever little end is sticking out and now let's go ahead and place the flower inside the component making sure the holes line up like this and this time we're going to go in through the top just like that. So now let's go ahead and form a loop at the opposite end. Kink the wire, switch, wrap the wire around the nose of your pliers, flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back like this, remove the pliers, and now grab the loop with your skinny pliers and with another set do a couple of wraps cut off the excess and tuck in the little end and now I'm going to line up the loops and this is going to hang right here like this. I have another agate bead and another ball head pin. Once again you want to grab the head pin at the top of the bead like this, kink it, switch, and by the way guys, you need to figure out where on your pliers you want to be. It all depends on what kind of pliers you're using. Your pliers may be different than mine. Mine are by Lindstrom and they have very skinny tips. So you may need to position your pin somewhere else on your pliers. It just all depends on how big you want your loop. So now you're going to remove your pliers and you're going to insert the open loop into the closed loop of the pendant. Just like that. Grab the loop with your skinny pliers and with another set grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. Snip off the excess and now tuck in the little end So this is going to go right below here on this jump ring. Let me move these off to the side. And now I'm going to make two more dangles using these six millimeter beads. So this time I'm going to need two one and three quarter inch pieces. 
because the beads are smaller. And two ball head pins. So I'm going to go ahead and assemble one with you and then I'm going to speed up the film so the video is not too long. Once again you want to grab the ball head pin at the top of the bead like this, kink it, switch, wrap the pin around the nose of your pliers, flip the pliers around, wrap to the back, remove the pliers, grab the loop with some skinny pliers, and with another set grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. Cut off the excess, tuck in the little end, so there's the bottom of this dangle and now let me grab this piece of wire, once again I'm going to grab at the top like this, kink it, switch, wrap the tail around the nose of the pliers, flip the pliers around, wrap to the back, Remove the pliers, grab the loop with the set of skinny pliers and do a couple of wraps. And now let me cut off the excess and now I'm going to tuck in the little end. Thread on the bead, grab the wire at the top of the bead, line up the bottom loop, kink it, switch, wrap the tail around the nose of the pliers, flip the pliers around and continue to wrap to the back. And I'm not going to do any wraps just yet because I need to attach it to this drop like this. Grab the loop with some skinny pliers and now I'm going to go ahead and do a couple of wraps. Once again you want to cut off the excess and now tuck in the little end if you see one. So here's this dangle. So now I'm going to do the same thing with these two beads. I'm going to speed up the film and I'll meet you back. So here are my three dangles and I'm ready to attach them to the pendant. Let's go ahead and attach the center one. It's a little bit tricky because I don't want to disconnect this uh, jump ring from the other two. You want to make sure that you close it really, really well because you don't want the dangle to slide out of the gap if you leave a gap in your jump ring. So that looks pretty good. So now we're going to connect these two. So once again you're going to open up the jump ring. Connect one of the dangles and close it up really well. So now we're going to go ahead and open up this other jump ring. Connect the dangle. Close it up. So here's the pendant and I think it looks adorable. And like I said before I'm not going to finish the wraps on this one because I'm going to connect the strands to that. Let me put these off to the side for the time being. For the strands we'll need 30 of these beads. 
So here's my 30. We're going to be using all 10 of these flower beads and 24 of these 6 millimeter beads. So now we're going to put these on wire and we're going to actually have four beaded components. Each one is going to have a flower bead with two 6 millimeter beads and then the rest of the beads are all going to be on their own separate piece of wire. So let's go ahead and cut some wire. And I want the pieces to be three inches long because I want the loops to be a little bit bigger than usual. Let me straighten this one out a little bit. So I'm going to show you how to build one of the three beta components, then I'll speed up the film. I'm going to grab the wire a little bit more than a third of the way down like this, kink it, switch to this portion, and I'm going to go to the widest part of my pliers. And like I said before, yours may be different depending on what brand of plier you're using. I'm going to wrap the tail around the barrel, flip the pliers around, and continue to wrap to the back like this. And now I'm going to grab the loop with my skinny pliers and grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. Cut off the excess. And now I'm going to tuck in the little end. Now let me thread on a six millimeter bead, one of the flower beads, another six millimeter bead like this. Grab the wire at the top of the bead, line up the bottom loop, kink it, and now I'm going to slide my pliers down to the thickest part, wrap the tail around, flip the pliers around, continue to wrap to the back, and this is what you should have. Let me go ahead and line up the loops. We're going to actually do all of them like this. We're going to have one closed loop at one end or one wrap loop at one end and one open loop at the other end. And the reason we need to do it like this is because we have to connect them together. So you need to have at least one end that's open. So anyway, let me go ahead and do another three just like this. Okay, so here are my four beaded components. And now the rest of these beads are all going to be on their own separate piece of wire. And this time you're going to need shorter pieces. I recommend two and a half inch pieces. And it's a good idea to straighten your wire out before you cut it. It doesn't have to be perfectly straight though. Obviously I'm going to need more than just this, but I'm going to go ahead and get started. And it's the same thing guys, nothing different about this process. You're going to kink your wire at the top, just like we've been doing, like this. The only thing that's different is that you do want your loops to be a little bit larger than usual. And when I say larger, for me it's like 5 millimeters maybe, but ultimately it's up to you how big you want your loops. Let me go ahead and do a couple of wraps. As always, you're going to cut off the excess and tuck in the little end. And now let's thread on a bead. Grab the wire at the top of the bead, line up the bottom loop, kink your wire, switch, Wrap the tail around, flip the pliers around, and continue to wrap to the back. Line up your loops. And this is what you want. As you can see, one of the loops has the wraps and the other one doesn't. And we're going to do all of these beads the exact same way, whether it's the 8mm, the 6mm, or the flower beads. So in order for this video to be a decent length, I'm going to go ahead and speed up the film. You'll still be able to see the process, but it'll be super fast. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll be right back.
Okay, I'm back. As you can see, I built all of my components and I'm so happy that I sped up the film because it took me forever, guys. There are so many beta components here and that's because the necklace is going to be super long. But anyway, I'm happy that I sped up the film and if you need to check back on how to do these components, just uh, you can either click on the timestamps down below in the description section of this video or just hit the back button if you need to see it again. So now we're going to go ahead and connect these components and build two strands. And it's relatively easy, so let me go ahead and get started. I'm basically going to take one of these beads. These are the 8mm agate beads. And now I'm going to connect another one to this end. So I'm going to connect the loop that has the wrapped end to the open end of this component like this. And now I'm going to close this loop with some wraps. So I'm going to grab the loop now with my skinny pliers. And with another set I'm going to grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. And now let me cut off the excess wire. And of course we need to tuck the little end in. We don't want any sharp ends. So this is what we have so far. So once again you're going to take a beta component, the 8mm agate, you're going to take the closed end, the end that has the wraps, slide it into the open end like this. I'm going to grab the loop with my skinny pliers and with another set I'm going to grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. And now let me cut off the excess and now tuck in the little end So now we have three beads connected, as you can see. So now let me connect two more of these beaded agate components for a total of five. As you can see, I've connected five of them. So now we're going to connect one of these flower components. So once again you're going to take the wrapped end, the closed end, and slide it into the open end like this. Flip your work around. Grab the loop with some skinny pliers. Grab the tail and do a couple of wraps. And now I'm going to snip off the excess. Tuck in the little end. So this is what we have so far. Let me just move these up a little bit so you can see a little bit better. So now I'm going to repeat the exact same pattern. I'm going to connect five agate beads and a flower component on this end. So let me go ahead and speed up the film and do that. As you can see I've connected another set. So I have five agate beads, a flower component, five agate beads and another flower component. So now I'm going to connect another set of five agate components and so let me go ahead and do that. Okay I've connected another five agate components so here's what we have so far. So now we're going to switch to the blue beads and I'm going to connect five of those to this end so it'll look something like this. Let me go ahead and do that. So here's what we have so far. Now there's a reason for this color blocking. You're going to find out later on why I'm doing it like this. These combinations are going to serve as a reference point later on when we convert the necklace to a multi-strand. So now the next thing that we're going to connect are these flower components. And we're going to have one here and then a blue bead. And then another flower component, another blue bead, and then one more flower component and one more blue bead like this. So let me go ahead and connect these and then I'll clean everything up and show you exactly what the strand looks like.
Okay, I'm back. As you can see, I've connected all of the beta components. And this is pretty much one strand, guys, okay? I'm going to repeat the exact same thing with the rest of these beads. So we'll have two strands just like that. Let me go over the beads again. We started with five beaded agate components, then a flower component, then five more agate components, another flower component, then five more agates, and then five of the six millimeter smooth rounds, and then a single flower component, another single blue bead, a single flower component, blue bead, flower component, blue bead. And I did measure it. It measures about 19 inches. Yours may be different depending on how big you make the loops. I purposely made them a little bit bigger than usual because I wanted to have a connecting point for the clasp. So anyway guys, now that I've built this strand, I'm going to go ahead and use up the rest of the beads to build the second strand. It's going to be identical to this one. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. As you can see, I built the second strand. So now that I have both strands, I'm ready to attach the pendants. Let's go ahead and connect the large one first. So I'm going to attach the strand directly to this jump ring. Let me go ahead and open it up. This is a 7mm jump ring by the way. And you want to make sure you close your jump rings really well guys. I can't emphasize that enough. So this one's connected. And now we're going to connect the other one the same way to this jump ring. Let me go ahead and open it up. Sometimes it's easier if you lay your work directly on your mat instead of having it dangle down. And now I have both strands connected to the main pendant as you can see. I think it looks lovely. So now we need to connect the other pendant to this end. And I think I'm going to go ahead and close up these loops with some wraps. So I'm going to grab the loop with my skinny pliers and then with another set of pliers I'm going to grab the tail and do my wraps. And now let me snip off the excess, tuck in the little end. Let me do this one now. Now before you connect the pendant to the other end, you want to make sure that your links are not all twisted around. So if you see any that are twisted, you want to untwist them. So now we're simply going to take the pendant and we're going to hook it onto one of the loops of the strands. And now we're going to take this strand and hook it onto the same loop, just like that. Grab the loop with my skinny pliers, grab the tail, and do a couple of wraps. And now let me cut off the excess. Tuck in the little end. So now we have this pendant connected. Isn't that adorable? It's difficult to get the whole thing in frame because the necklace is super long. But as you can see, we have this cute little pendant at this end. And at the opposite end, we have this large focal pendant. Let me show you a different angle. Hopefully you're able to see the whole thing. But here it is, guys, and I absolutely love it. In a few moments, I'm going to show you how to turn it into a multi-strand necklace. So you'll get to see it better on the board as well as on me because I'm going to be modeling it for you. But I wanted to go over the pattern with you again. So we started with the five agate beads and then we added the floral beaded component with the two six millimeter beads on either side of the flower. And then another set of five agate beads, another floral component, another set of five agate beads, 
and then the five six millimeter beads and then one single flower a six millimeter bead a single flower a six millimeter a single flower a six millimeter and then the pendant and I repeated the same pattern for the other strand and the reason I created these patterns is so that I would have a reference point for when I connect the clasp and I'm going to show you that next so let me go ahead and set it up for you so here I have an example of how you would wear it it took me literally years guys to come up with this idea because I had started out with um, the, the whole idea of using extension chains for necklaces and I had experimented in different ways to see if I could make something convertible. I'm a big fan of having one piece that serves multiple purposes. But out of all the options that I thought about, the one that I'm going to show you is the one that works the best in my opinion. So let me show you how we're going to do this. Here's the clasp and I have two four millimeter jump rings. Let me bring down my necklace. As you can see, I have two reference points here. I'm actually going to connect the clasp to this bead right here. So let me go ahead and open up one of these jump rings and I'll show you what we're going to do. I'm going to attach the jump ring to the bar portion of the toggle clasp like this. And I went into my stash and found a lobster claw clasp. I'm going to attach the lobster claw clasp to the jump ring like this. Let me close it up. So now we have this. Let me go ahead and open up this other jump ring. And now we're going to attach the ring portion of the toggle clasp to the jump ring and another lobster claw clasp. And these are just your regular lobster claw clasps, nothing fancy about these. They're in an antique silver color. Let me close up the jump ring. So this is what we have so far. So let me show you what we're going to do. Once you figure out how long you want the upper tier, you're going to connect one of the ends of the toggle clasp to one of the loops of your beaded component, just like that. You're going to connect the other one to the opposite end or the opposite side. So let's go ahead and do that now. As you can see, I've connected them to the exact same loop on each strand. So it's not this loop, it's the second loop. Same thing on this one. So now all you have to do is connect your toggle clasp like this and let me move it up and now you have a double tier necklace. Let me move the camera up so you can see the top end. Okay, there's your toggle clasp right there and here's the upper tier and here's the lower tier. Let me move it down. There's the pendant. So anyway guys that's a solution I came up with to make a necklace convertible and you can do the same thing with a lobster claw clasp. As you can see I have two lobster claw clasps at each end with a larger lobster claw clasp and a ring in the middle. You can do it with a magnetic clasp. Okay. You could even do the same thing with a hook and eye clasp. I'm pretty sure any clasp would work. And what I like about this system is that you can adjust the length of your upper tier. So if you want a choker length at the top, you can have that and then a longer tier at the bottom. And I'll move this up a little bit. You could also flip these around. So if you wanted the butterfly pendant on the upper tier and this one on the lower tier, you could do that as well. Let me show you. Actually, I'm going to put on the magnetic clasp to make things easier. Here's my magnetic clasp just for demonstration purposes. I personally don't like magnetic clasps because they come apart too easily and they definitely don't work for heavy beads. So I wouldn't recommend this for heavy beads. But let me show you exactly what I mean by switching the pendants around. So here's an example of how you would wear it. Let me move the camera down so you can see the bottom. There's the bottom and there's the butterfly pendant. So let me go ahead and attach the magnetic clasp. I'm going to attach it to the second agate bead component this time. Like this. Let me attach this end now. So there's the connection right there. 
And here's how it looks. Let me move the camera down so you can see the pendant at the bottom and the clasp at the top. So anyway, guys, as you can see, the possibilities are endless. The other thing you can do, let me move this up a little bit and show you another little trick. I have a tassel here and I don't know where I got this tassel. I, it's, it was in my stash. But as you can see, I attached a lobster claw clasp at the very top. And now all I have to do is attach it to this pendant right here. Let me move this up. And now as you can see, I've lengthened this pendant and made it a little bit fancier by adding the tassel. Of course, you could add anything you want. You could add all kinds of charms down here. The possibilities are endless. So anyway, guys, I hope I've given you some ideas and I hope you like this tutorial. And as always, I'd like to go ahead and put this on and show you all the different ways you can wear it. So let me go ahead and do that and I'll be right back. But I can't decide which is my favorite. I like all the different options, honestly. I like them all. But I'm very curious about which one you like the best. So if you have a favorite, please leave a comment down below. But anyway, guys, I love the versatility of this necklace. I like that you can change it up and get different looks. That's really appealing to me because then you can adapt depending on what kind of outfit you wear. So anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial. I hope I've given you some ideas. Go out and make your own necklaces. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to seeing you again. Have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.